Hello everyone and welcome to Thursday Live Lesson Live Live <laughs> Live at our brand new uh, Ukulele Underground studio My name is Aldrin Guerrero Joining me are live in the studio Mr. Aaron the voice now Kamura Say what's up Aaron What's up And Kahai the legend Fergan say what's up Kahai What's up I, I haven't done this in so long I don't even know where to look I'm looking at this camera maybe Or maybe this one I'm not sure I haven't done this in so long Which one do I look at Kahai we didn't discuss this pre-show. Uh, the, this one. You're right. The tall yeah. one. Yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> Jeez, this is this is nice. We're we're social distancing. You know, we're uh, we're we're being we're being careful. We're being you know we're being safe. So Aaron is a good like seven eight feet away from me, and Kahai is like nine ten feet away from me. We're we're all good. And um, yeah, let's get started. This is Thursday live lesson here at Ukulele on the Ground. We like to answer any and all of your questions. So it is live. You guys can uh, join us live for the live video. Ask us uh, questions in the live chat if you want to, or you can send us a question, or you can send a video if you want some assessments and stuff. But basically, we just want to help out. It's more like a town hall meeting. You guys can ask us questions, or we can uh, give you some advice. Okay, so here we go. Kahai, why don't you give me the first question? Uh, this one is from Mike. And so he said, I have a question for a uh, Thursday live lesson. Mm -hmm. Has Audrine played the Kanilea Oha T, uh, solid koa top and solid mahogany back and sides? If so, how would he compare the sound to the Aqua models? Mm. Um, it's, it's great. I've played it before. I played it um, when they uh, were going to introduce it at now or when they introduce it at now. And, uh, and I got to play it at the you know at the factory when I visited. It's it's awesome. I mean, it's a great bang for your buck. It uh, it definitely sounds nice. It has that you know that that core kind of brightness sound to it. The feel is you know is basically the same. But I think just um, uh, the bracing is not quite the same. It doesn't have those like those triangle kind of bracing and stuff. But it's built like you know like old school Kanilea is what I like to think of it as. It sounds awesome, but you know. It, Sound is really subjective because if I got another one of this exact same model, this one right here, and it's koa, exact materials, those two will still sound a little bit different. But, you know, for me, if um, if you don't want to pay, you know, like the thousand plus for like a, um, a full koa tenor, getting an OHA actually... Is, is a great deal. I think it's a good bang for your buck, like I mentioned, and you get a nice bright sound and get that Kanilea tone to it. So it's pretty close. Have you guys played it? No. Uh, I think no. they had one uh, at um, the music store in Lihue. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But we and, were just discussing it yeah. with, with Kanilea and then. Yeah. Mike, yeah. actually, we should have gotten Mike to uh, to answer that question. Next time we get Mike in, because um, he's he's actually going to try to see if he can buy one, because Mike likes that sound so yeah. much he's going to buy one. He's been. Uh, uh, he's been playing with my baritone, my Kanilea baritone. Um, I just asked for it back, and he's like, you know, um, he was saying that he liked the baritone so much. He was thinking about picking up a Kanilea, and he's thinking about picking up an Oha, and because he's like, it's not, you know, like super duper expensive, and it's in his price range, and it sounds good. So take it from Mike, you know, that's uh, he, that guy knows a thing or two about instruments. He's constantly surrounded by it, but he digs it. He digs it. I dig it too. I think it sounds good. Um, you know, it's it's a step up from the uh, from the Islanders, even like the nice coal Islanders and stuff. Um, but you know, it's not. I mean, it's not quite the showpiece that uh, that a full koa kanilea is. But I think it's good. I think it's like the top is koa, but it's got like mahogany back and sides and yeah. stuff. And I think the um, you know, the the bracing is is not is not the same. But it sounds good. And I that's really like the the main point, right? Is if it sounds good, it sounds good. It looks good too. Cause it's got that koa top. Yeah, I dig it. Yeah. So I I mean there there have been studies and stuff like kind of things that show that the back and sides have less to do with the sound mm -hmm. and it's just all the, the than top. the yeah. the top and mm -hmm. the the way that it's braced the way that it's constructed mm -hmm. so yeah so if you're if you're really just looking at the sound if that's your main factor mm -hmm. then yeah it sounds great yeah and then um it, it really for the back and sides it really is your own personal preference mm -hmm. if that's okay with you mm -hmm. that it's just mahogany yeah. I mean, the mahogany is beautiful too, so yeah. it's not like it's yeah, a mahog compromise, I think, really. <laughs> I think koa bouncing off of mahogany is a good combination. Yeah, it's yeah, a good like combination it's, it's anyway. It's a great combination. Yeah. Because yeah. uh, you, you got a nice, bright, you know, bright top with the koa. And mahogany is 
kind of on the same you know uh, it, it's bright but it can get pretty dark as well yeah it like kind of rounds yeah, it out around it ra- yeah. rounds the sound out yeah i dig it i dig it it's it, it gets it gets two thumbs up from a connie leo fanboy <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, you yeah. know but and don't you know don't get me wrong i do love connie Leo's and stuff but i think they really outdone uh done themselves with this one because it's it's a good price point and i think people can get their their hands on a koa esque ukulele without you know, without breaking the bank. Yeah. Good. yeah. 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 Next up. Uh, this one is from Mikkel. And he said, uh, can you do the roll by releasing the fingers in reverse order or inverse order? Mm. Uh, so instead of doing pinky ring, middle pointer yeah. to do pointer, middle ring, pinky. Mm. To me, that feels way more natural. Mm. Okay. So, you know, I've, I've gotten this question before, like from, you know, from private students, because like they kind of think of it as doing this. But really, if you're doing pointer to a, to, to a pinky finger, the follow up is uh, and you kind of have to the follow up is different and you kind of have to shift your uh, your your whole form because the form okay, let's, going back to the form, which is pointing to yourself and then pointing down to the ground like this. OK, so it's kind of like. You know, after you wash your hands, you just kind of let loose on the wrist here. So you kind of point to yourself and point down to the ground. We also talked about in Nukola 100, like the pill bottle that, you know, you kind of you get, you just shake that pill bottle and stuff. Right. So you, this is the this is the movement. So when you, um, you know, when you're starting from the uh, strumming up position and you're going to strum down, really the, the pinky finger is there. And when you end, you end with, you know, with your pointer finger ready for that follow up with the up strum. If you're doing it the opposite, you know, you kind of watch how my hand or, or my wrist kind of changes direction. So instead of it going from like this, where you're just getting the, you know, getting the, uh, the water out of your hands, this goes with the chunk, you know, you chunk the same way. I would chunk like this with, with my pointer first, right? A chunk like this with all four and it's the pinky hitting it and you're kind of down and then. Hitting, uh, stopping with the thumb. Same thing with the roll. Kind of just doing this. You're curling up your fingers and then like just uncurling them as you go. So a lot of people think you're you're releasing them. It's kind of like you're holding it like this and then you're releasing it one by one. But it's really just opening up the hand. See, I'm going from a close to open. Close to just open. And it just happens to just drag onto the strings like so. So it's not like I'm doing this, you know? It's not like a not individual one, yeah. strums per finger. That's not really the roll. The roll is it's a down strum with all four fingers. And as you go down, you open up the hand like this. So it's just if uh, if my form, you know, if I'm following that form of up, down, up, down, pointing to myself and pointing down to the ground, here it is slow. My fingers are nice and loose, point to myself. So that naturally the uh, the pinky finger should be there if you if you twist your wrist kind of looking at your wrist like this or looking at your nails this way then looking at your nails the other way that's the that's the twist of the wrist if you were to do it with your pointer finger it's see how my you know how my wrist kind of curls up to do so that's not what i want to do my wrist stays nice and uh, nice and straight let's see if i can do it from this angle like my, my wrist stays nice and straight Going from here, I'm just twisting it like that. I'm just kind of like getting rid of the water. But if I did it the other way, it's almost like I have to move my elbow, you know, with it because <laughs> it has to be at, at this angle. So it's it's actually the opposite of uh, of it being natural because then that this is a more natural. Now if I were to do it the other way. Can't even you know like because after the uh after that up with the with the pointer finger because if i'm doing the, with the regular form up here i have to like switch this way yeah you yeah, know yeah. with my the order uh, with my of fingers. your fingers almost yeah. yeah so since i have to do this it's gonna come out unnaturally and then if my pinky ends that roll um look at it from this angle see like how weird that you know that is so i have to bring it back up so that like my pointer finger can reach the up and point to myself because here I'm not even pointing down to the ground. I'm pointing more like that way, but this way with the you know with the pinky first leading, pointer finger points down. So, see that? So there. Now he's, I'll go to the wide angle because it's kind of like this. See that? <laughs> that way. Whereas this goes down to the ground. Yeah. yeah. I- 
my guess is that he when he's talking about more naturally he's talking about oh. just in, uncurling his fingers mm-hmm. it's more natural to go mm-hmm. pointer to pinky instead of pinky yeah. to pointer yeah but, uh can you show that <laughs> like um how you practice uncurling point uh, okay. pinky to pointer like yeah. when you're driving or whatever so if you're driving you know and you're just like stuck in traffic or whatever you have your you know you have your steering wheel and i just like to curl my fingers and then just kind of undo them one at a time pinky ring middle pointer like this It'll give you some, you know, like a little bit of strength on on curling them. But really, it's just closing your, you know, closing that fist and opening that, you know, opening that hand. If you're a Filipino parent, it's like close, open, close, open, close, open, close, open. Right, Kahai? Yeah. Your Filipino parents? Uh, yes, my Japanese Filipino parents. <laughs> And here's here's a little secret, okay? I don't know if we've ever discussed this, but the roll actually starts with the up strum. You can do the roll with just the down, but it starts off with the up and then going down. So it's like dragging your pointer finger up and then uncurling those fingers, yeah? So you go up. Or you can use your thumb to go up like this and then pinky finger lead in, corner finger down. And it's still the same, you know, uh, the same form as I do for the down up down up strum. So here's the down up down up strum regular. And here's what it looks like with the roll. Thumb. It starts out in that up, and then you do the roll. So and roll and one and two and four and roll and two and three and four and roll and two and three and four and roll and two and three and four. So and roll and roll. Instead of going and roll, which you can, I guess. But it just sounds a little bit dragged if you have, uh, you know, if you have too much of a space between the up and the roll itself. So down, up. See that? Because if there's space in there, it sounds like it's dragging. But if there's no space... It's more like swing because that's exactly what you're doing. You're swinging from the upbeat to the down, like, or you're swinging to the downbeat from the up. That's <laughs> yeah. what it is. Yeah. <laughs> people, people do swing music. They're like, no, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's like you're swinging to the downbeat from from the up. It's a very uh, and you're and I tell my students, you're you're kind of. Um, you know, taking the personality of the ukulele because the ukulele is kind of just this laid back instrument, not necessarily lazy, but that's another way, you know, to kind of put it. It's it's kind of like laid back and you're just cruising on the beach and you're playing your uke. So strumming isn't necessarily one and two and three and four. And if that was, you know, how is Kamaka Viva Ole strummed his ukulele, I saw you in my dreams. It doesn't sound good. It's got, it needs that kind of swing in there so one and two and i saw you in, even if i played it hard like i did earlier <laughs> i saw you in my dreams better than we were walking hand in hand <laughs> it just sounds too robotic <laughs> yeah so getting that swing in there and that up that's really the secret of the roll is on the up just kind of and then you drop down pinky first to the pointer finger so it's a little bit more unnatural to do this way because you have to change your form completely than to do the uh, do the roll with your pinky finger so that it kind of naturally leads to uh, where you want to go because you want to end up here because that's the that's the form that we take anyway up to ourself down to the ground so if we do down to the ground pinky finger should be right here so if you're twisting your wrist and you're doing the whole looking at your nails this way and looking at your nails that way it's kind of like making that staircase that we were talking about, you know, that staircase and just opening up the hand. So it's not like, you know, watch, watch my hands. It's not like opening up one by one. It's like opening up together. 
but this kind of movement of your uh, of your wrist so it actually takes the wrist and the opening up of the hand that's causing the roll okay yeah. what do you guys think and then it, it really like it'll take like just a day i think yeah. of like practicing just if you do the thing where you put your your fingers down and you open it up individually mm -hmm. pinky to to pointer and then you you know you kind of just practice doing the rolls like don't do uh uh we don't even teach you know strumming patterns anymore mm. but don't try to like even do a strumming pattern with a roll just do like roll down 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 roll down. like really yeah. something simple <laughs> or like just, go just to roll down it. roll yeah. up roll up roll up yeah and then if you do that for like a just a day you'll yeah. get it like it's it really I think people complicate it more in their head than it actually yeah. is right like they they're thinking yeah. a lot and then that's where it's like yeah. getting harder for them yeah so it's not a not a single release of you know the fingers it's all kind of working together because that's more natural it's like um i want another thing that i tell my i it's been really cool because i've been doing all these like private lessons so i've been getting all these like uh ways to explain these things better it's kind of like shooing you know shooing away a fly you don't shoo a fly away with your pointer finger like this. <laughs> serving them <laughs> yeah. Serving them, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> serving them food. You shoo this way. Shoo, you know, shoo, 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 shoo. Yeah. So pinky goes first, right? And it's all together. And it's not like shoo, you know, like you're yeah. doing one finger at a time. It's really just shoo. Yeah. Or yeah. Uh, as Aaron put it, taking the, uh, you know, taking the donut uh, off of your shirt. If you're oh, eating yeah. donuts, you donut get the powder, powder. powder donuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, get the powder donut, get it on your shirt. You're like, oh, no powder you don't go like this it's like so awkward to like yeah. twist your wrist this way and go mm. like that like oh no powder yeah. it's this way <laughs> yeah that's a more natural so if we're talking natural this really is a more natural movement than this opposite <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah then serving food. <laughs> serve the fly yeah. <laughs> shoot fly shoot so uh, here's some carrots <laughs> uh sue asks does aldrin touch the uke when doing the roll um, what do you mean? I guess like, do, do your fingers come in contact with the body or? Um, not necessarily. I mean, it's just like just on the strings. On the right? strings, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it does make contact, but it's really the top of your nails is kind of gliding, gl brushing through the strings. Yeah. So that's what's rolling on the strings. If we could, you know, use <laughs> yeah. make a r word association. You're rolling your the top of your nails over the plastic strings. Yeah, so not not too much sound like clacking against the body or anything. Yeah. Uh, I was just talking to another member, mm -hmm. and I told him that the reason why he's hitting his uke is because he's strumming with his forearm and going down, like keeping his forearm or keeping his wrist the same, mm -hmm. and then just moving his forearm up and this. down. Oh, like this. Yeah, and then so when you do mm -hmm. that, it keeps it on the same plane, right? as your your ukulele and yeah. if you're you're getting close you're gonna hit your ukulele mm -hmm. eventually mm -hmm. yeah but if you twist when you're at your the the top of the, the strum and the bottom of the strum your finger should be like away from the ukulele mm -hmm. so that's how you're not like yeah it's more yeah. of an arc right yeah like yeah. yeah yeah and the yeah. only time that it's close is when it's by the strings mm -hmm. so that's really like the only time i mean i think if you hit the uke it's not that big of a deal mm -hmm. right like you shouldn't like be like, oh no, I don't want to ever hit my uke. Mm. It, it's gonna happen occasionally, but mm. yeah, that's. I think that's what most people have a problem with. Is uh, like they're not adding that twist. Yeah, that, and I mean, there's there's all kinds of different ways to play ukulele. You know, I mean, this is the most efficient way, and this is the way that kind of makes sense with all the other techniques that you'll later uh, later learn and stuff. If you're a beginner, um, but you know, watch any like you know ukulele professional ukulele player like jake or james or, or clay or any of those guys and stuff like really this is like the, the form that most professionals use um you know if if you want to uh take it nice and simple you can just you know do that do that strum because i sometimes do this strum right here where like i just take my thumb and i just strum like this and there's no problem in that if you're just doing no problem with playing it that way but Maybe that's how, like, that's why people think it's like a lot easier to do the pointer finger when you do the, you know, do the roll. Mm -hmm. It's probably because you're not twisting your wrist. Yeah. But if you're doing this, it's kind of tough to do the 
the chunk because you know the thumb is up here. So if I'm playing a song that doesn't require the chunk, then maybe I'll like play it nice and you know, like for for example, reggae. Reggae doesn't necessarily have the chunk because I have the left hand mute. You know, it's it's chunky enough already. Um, and to really get that kind of skank. I like to strum like this, you know? Like I don't I don't do the whole like pointing to myself, which is just kind of about here, but still really I'm kind of pointing myself still, out yeah, here yeah. too, you know? Yeah. Like, even if I'm doing it that way and it doesn't look awkward, uh, but a lot of people tend to do it from here and then they try they try to strum like so. My wrist is still straight. It's not it doesn't look awkward, you know, but I guess if I'm playing that way I think a lot of people it, too, and even then, like it still feels better to do it with a pinky. <laughs> I think a lot of people too. They they mm -hmm. look at guitar players, yeah. and guitar players use their forearm, yeah, yeah. like their full forearm, yeah. and that's how they strum. And they keep mm -hmm. their wrist straight, and they yeah. don't because they're holding a pick and they're just going down, up, down. Yeah. So that's what they're trying to like emulate. But yeah, it for you, it's a little different. You gotta strum it a little different. Even the um, because uh, because Jake has taught his like his ten finger roll. You know, for example, so he goes thumb, then up with the pinky finger, uh, pinky ring middle pointer, then down pinky ring middle pointer, then ends with the thumb. It's like the same thing. So even with like the fanciest rasquedo with a 10 finger strum, it still ends with that pinky ring middle pointer with the, you know, this way, pinky, like pinky first. So up. <laughs> yep cool next question uh that was all the questions that we had for today well uh kenneth noticed your jollibee shirt so he said how about some jollibee <laughs> spaghetti with pieces of hot dog Ooh, what about it <laughs> yeah you've been reading are, my diary <laughs> are you are you offering are you uh, yeah are you offering yeah you, you yeah because we don't have a jollibee on Kauai <laughs> actually don't. So but, this um, is just a fever dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But Aldrin's mom has a great recipe um, for for the spaghetti, yeah. and so whenever we we want it, we <laughs> just ask. <laughs> I, the I think one of the favorite thing or one of my favorite things that we did with it was yeah. when we made the flying saucers with it. Right, Ooh, yeah. that was pretty good. My one yeah. advice is just don't ask what's in it. <laughs> like, that's it. You, just, you don't want to know. You know, like you just. You don't want to know what's in it. It's good. It's just that's just all you need to know. It's delicious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't ask. Well, you, it's not even the whole like I don't want to give you the recipe. It's just I don't. You know. You I don't think you yeah. should know. I don't you think you know. should know. <laughs> will you will you feel sleepy afterwards? Yeah. I yeah. Mean, yeah. It's like <laughs> definitely in Hawaii we call it kanak attacks because you're being attacked by some kanaks. Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's uh, I grew up with this stuff. You know, like uh, Jollibee's. It's it's a it's a thing. I love them. but the fried chicken. I I have uh, KFC. I've had um, Popeyes. I've had like um, El Pollo Loco. I've had a bunch of other like fried and and, and um, grilled chicken. But just it's it's that gravy, man. Like just put <laughs> something in that gravy. That gravy I could just bathe in. It, I think. Like that, that, that gravy. It it reminds me because um somebody like mm -hmm. probably a few months ago mm -hmm. and I I forgot to tell you this. They said that on the lesson where you told them to take the leftover KFC and like cook it in the rice yeah. with the rice. Yeah. They're like, oh man, Aldrin, you're such a good ukulele <laughs> player, but that that uh, KFC in the rice the tip, that, oh, that is out of this world. <laughs> that is amazing. Yeah. So <laughs> they have this like this uh, this KFC bucket, like family bucket, whatever thing uh -huh. now, like there's two bucks, like 40 bucks for like 220 bucks piece or something 10 uh -huh. 20 piece buckets yeah so we ate one and then we froze the other yeah so that like whenever we make rice just take one of just take one and put it in the rice so, yeah. chicken rice you'll hear so you, that later. that's like in the rice cooker <laughs> yeah you just put um you wash your rice wash your rice put the water and then put the chicken inside and, just <laughs> and then cook, just set yeah, it just like it you would it. normally so cook all it. the uh the the 11 or 13 herbs and spices that uh -huh. KFC puts in goes in the rice and all that chicken <laughs> grease. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah. Just don't, you, don't ask what's in it. That's it. You, <laughs> that's you, it. <laughs> you've helped a lot of people learn ukulele, but I mean, that's second to your, yeah. your tip yeah. on <laughs> KFC chicken. <Yeah. laughs> chicken rice. Uh, I think uh, even Devin said that uh, mm. he checked out Jolly because yeah, we talked about it. I read it. that, yeah. Yeah, and he was he loved it. He said, uh, that chicken, see? I think Devin was talking about the chicken because yeah. 
you know, sweet spaghetti, maybe not some people's things because it, it is sweet. It's kind of weird like when people first try it. Most yeah. people like once they like let go of the idea of what spaghetti is supposed to taste like, mm -hmm. sweet spaghetti is awesome. But some people can't, which is fine. But chicken is <laughs> universal. Chicken is, well, yeah, it's universal. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you put that gravy in it yeah. or you just dip it in that gravy. I just, you know, if if anybody could just freeze it and send it over with like a, you know, with with, with dry ice or, or something. Mm -hmm. If they could find a way to give us a tub of uh, of Jollibee spaghetti, we would, we would be forever in debt. <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it telling that the mm. first podcast where we're back together, we're talking about food again? <laughs> I would, so our songs are due today. I think I wrote my like tenth song on food because it's like I wrote a, yet another food song today. Okay, I was I was making the uh, the EP like uh, that, that new album that I'm working on. And um, uh, yeah, some food songs in there too. <laughs> I was like, man, like just, this. What? <laughs> Do you have a name for the EP? Um, it, it's called. I don't know the order, but it's like, uh, rice patty eggs gravy. Uh -huh. the, yeah, that's the name of the EP. Rice <laughs> patty eggs gravy. I was gonna say you should name it the lunchbox EP. <laughs> <laughs> but like the uh, we've. Me and me and Heather have kind of already um, designed the the cover where it's just mm. like you know like the the okay. rice in the bottom is white and then it's like that color mm. oh. color scheme so it kind of like stacks up yeah and um, yeah orange for the Portuguese sausage at the top <laughs> it's gonna be good I'm nice. I'm pretty I'm pretty stoked for it. it's like it sounds like a homemade you know like EP because it is but whatever it's it's for you guys it's it's more for like the thursday live uh, live lesson audience because most if not all those songs are songs that are wrote for thursday live lesson with the exception of uh uh the song called the ranch and the song called chocolate fontaines everything else is a thursday live lesson song <laughs> <laughs> well even chocolate fontaine was a thursday live oh, lesson yeah? song right i, I forgot it right <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah okay uh, well then there you go <laughs> <laughs> It's a love letter to you guys. <laughs> it's okay. uh, it should be out soon, but I think once I'm done with it, it's gonna take another four or five weeks until it shows up on uh, on Spotify. So it's gonna be a little bit. Cool. Yeah. Uh, so uh, can we do the student reviews? We got yes. a couple today. Yes, we do have a couple of student reviews. Um, first one, Kai. Let us know about the first one. Uh, the first one is from Wesley, and he's doing uh, Canon again. Mm. I think it's Canon C, yeah, not yeah. Canon in D. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so he he sent us this one before, but it was an update on how mm. he's doing. So, yeah. Okay, so this time he used his thumb. Yeah, it sounds awesome, actually. Like, uh, yeah. We were just talking about, like, I don't know if it's the... Uh, the the technique that you know the the change in the technique or it's like that you know that gorgeous baritone ukulele or uh tenor ukulele that he put baritone strings on like mm -hmm. if it's if it's that that's that's making that you know that's sounding so good but it sounded really good um i would put a little bit more uh more angle on the thumb and you know i'm not gonna give you a hard time about it because it's your uh, like first, first time, time trying really it trying, out so yeah. don't worry about it you know it, it'll take a little bit of time to get used to and to get familiar with what sounds good with that technique but uh, you're kind of hitting it from this you know from this angle where the thumb is uh, is kind of pointed towards the uh the uh the headstock you want to point the thumb to um closer to uh to to the sound hole like this because you want uh if, if you're hitting it from the side so you I'll, I'll show you from this angle you're really only getting this much of uh of surface area that you're there you're hitting the um you know the, the string with so it's a very thin sound because it's a thin surface area but you want what you want to do is protrude that that wrist just a little bit and not super awkward like this but you want to just protrude it a little bit like that so that it changes the uh, the angle see so it goes from this angle to this so that uh, i can kind of show you here so yeah there you go so that's that angle is a lot more like um, more hitting it, hitting it from here instead of it hitting from the side, right? So since you're hitting it up here, you're getting the density of your thumb and you're getting some nail as you exit that you know that attack, right? So that attack starts out with the flesh. Let me see it right here. I'll go from uh, can I can I do that? Yeah, from from here. See that? So he's gonna go flesh whoop, and then out with the nail. Instead of here, which is just flesh. 
and just very thin, <laughs> you know, very thin amount of flesh. This way, it's flesh, nail out. So you want to hit it with, with this angle instead. So, um... Okay, um... So that's you know that's that's for the for the right hand. So you're doing pretty good, you know, based on uh, on not really doing it that much or trying it for the first time. So good job so far, you know. Uh, the left hand, um, it, it needs a little bit of work. Um, be mindful of your bar chords, especially when you know we did notice that when you're getting up here, you know, the bar uh, the bar chords are not coming out as clean as you know as as we would like to hear it. Uh, so the the best advice that I can give you is um, you can break down this song into two different things. It's a chord melody song, and there it is in the words. There's the chords, and then there's the melody line. You can uh, you know like isolate the melody line and isolate the chords. So uh, canon and D, um, thankfully, is is like a chord progression. So there's a progression of C, then G, A minor, then E minor, F. C, F, and G, I think. I don't know. I think that's the chord progression, but there is a progression, something like that, you know? Um, I would just prefer, uh, not prefer, but I would suggest you learn, you know, like the chord progression and the three different inversions that you're playing in it because you're going up the neck as you play the melody line along with it, right? So because it's a progression, you shouldn't be too surprised of what chord should be coming up if you have the chord progression down. So if you have the chord progression down, you know exactly which note and which chord is coming up next based on, you know, on the on the song itself. So when you're playing you should kind of know that it's C then C then G G then A minor like how we talked about an E minor then uh, uh, then F and then to C and then F and then to G or F and then to G or this F and then this G all the inversions get it down so if you can get the chords down adding the melody line after that is going to be a lot easier okay because the melody line is in the chords you know for for the most part so like for example um you're playing that 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 C and that G right there is uh, is that first part of that that melody line. So that A minor there. From the F the G F the G, you know, C. It's get the chords and add the melody line and put it together. So um, so you're not trying to tackle both at the same time and trying to like. Um, memorize like uh, chord shapes with the melody line in it. Instead, just kind of work on the the chords itself, then add the the melody line afterwards. What do you guys think? Uh, yeah, I think Mike even gave him that same kind mm -hmm. of advice, right? Mm -hmm. Like that one part. I think that one part gives him a hard time. The da 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 da. Yeah. So just even that. Just practice those notes because yeah. those mo notes are uh, are they mixolydian or lydian? What are uh, mixolydian? Yeah, like yeah. So he <laughs> so he can just play. Same. He can just practice that yeah. right, like mm -hmm. over and over and over. And then yeah, when you know it, like when you know, and Mike was saying like practice your skills, but really you want to practice your positions. So knowing your positions, mm -hmm. that's kind of what you're yeah. saying too, right? Like yeah. yeah, just be more familiar with your positions. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, this, this song is, is a core progression. So if you just be mindful of the progression, you will never get lost, you know, mm -hmm. like in the song and in what... It just you know, repeats over, yeah, and over. over and over. Over and over. Yeah. So, but, yeah, I think, I mean, I think he just needs to get more familiar with the song because the left hand was kind of mm -hmm. where he was mm -hmm. struggling. So just, um, I, like, I would say just take, like, two measures. Yeah. And just then get just those two measures just down. yeah just do mm -hmm. it so that you don't have to read yeah because <laughs> I think that's what's tripping him up yeah. is that he's like you know he's kind of he's not sure what's gonna come up next so mm -hmm. he's like kind of reading he's like keeping an eye on the sheet music mm -hmm. and then that's what you know like that makes him stumble yeah. 
So like if you get it down, like you know, you don't even have to get the entire song. Yeah. Just get the the first four measures down, mm-hmm. like where you can do it without even thinking about it. Then you can think about the music. Yeah. Because then that's where you know the expression will come in. That's mm-hmm. where you know the fluidity will come in. So um, yeah, if you can get four measures down and it sounds great, that will feel a lot better than getting the whole song down yeah. and not great. You know. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, I would yeah. say with any song, just kind of tackle it mm-hmm. that way. But I mean, you know, you're you're doing great. Actually, the, like the you know the things that you did change with with the right hand, it sounded good. Yeah, it's just kind of you know put a little bit more work on the uh, on the chords and, and notes and stuff. And I think you're I think you're there. It's it's you know we definitely hear the the improvements. Yeah, you know? so, yeah. Good job, man. Definitely. And and anytime that he seems mm. to anchor, yeah, it, you yeah. know his right hand is on. Yeah. It's, it's perfect mm-hmm. and then yeah just it just um kind of the the notes themselves mm-hmm. might be tripping him up mm-hmm. but that's easy to fix it's right. it's less about the playing technique now it's and it's more about knowing the music mm-hmm. that'll yeah. really yep. get you to the next yeah. level yeah cool so we have another one uh Can yeah we... from uh Ritesh, Ritesh. Uh, yeah and mm-hmm. he sent in what song is this uh it's uh box what is it like or cello, cello suite yeah. yeah cello suite yeah so, so this is the song that uh, that wesley was working on before he was working on canon in uh canon in c or mm-hmm. canon um which actually did an amazing job like he, <laughs> he did really good i don't want to yeah. make anybody feel bad as stuff, but like that is like i i don't know you didn't learn that from me you know what I mean? like that's <laughs> that's all you uh it it was great um if if i had to like you know uh, give some kind of critique or advice um you know be mindful of your positions on the uh, you know on, on your right hand although you you got it you got it pretty good uh, and you know i mean considering you're using four fingers too because i don't normally use the pinky but for that particular song it might be uh it might be an exception because it's very like kind of bass heavy too so keeping that thumb on that on that bass mm-hmm. on the on the top two um, makes makes. Oh, no, a lot he wasn't of sense using his me. pinky, right? It was just the ring. You know, the the the, the four fingers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, uh, with with that, but your your pointer and your and your thumb seems to be a little bit close sometimes, where it's kind of like this. You wanna um you wanna bring back the thumb a little bit. So my thumb for me kind of does this X between the uh, the thumb and the the middle finger, so that it's kind of out of out of the way. But I guess if you're using your ring finger, it's, it gets a little bit more difficult. But um, also, uh, keep an eye on your wrist. That was, I think, my my biggest um, concern is just that your wrist was kind of up here when you're, you know, when you're doing the uh, when you're doing the song. So be mindful of your wrist position because you don't want to hurt yourself. Because uh, prolonged use of your wrist being up here when you when you do that might uh, might cause some damages. So see if you can like straighten it out and see if you can play those same lines using a straighter wrist. But other than that, dude, amazing job! <laughs> like that's it's, I don't even know what else to say. It's kind of the it's almost the yeah. opposite of Wesley, where it's like Ritesh obviously knows his music really well. Yeah, and then now it's just like we're just Fine-tuning, nitpicking yeah. little detailed yeah. technique things but really it's like yeah 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 because he wasn't even he wasn't looking at anything he was just doing it right just from memory and but it's a long song yeah it and it, it seemed like that mm-hmm. where he was basing it more off of the chords mm-hmm. so like he knew what chords were coming up and then he kind of knew where the melody line was going to go anyway so he was just adding mm-hmm. fingers in in order to make the me- melody yeah. line come out so it's that's only, yeah that's <clears throat> that's how you make the song sound fluid is just knowing, knowing was, it like that i was looking for a lot of things like i was looking to see if he held each note to its full value which he did mm-hmm. you know like, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was looking for um like the fluidity you know going from one note to to the other not just ringing them out but then like how he's kind of you know utilizing his fingers to to go because once you lift up one finger that stops it but you know his his use i don't know whose arrangement that was but it sounds it sounds his, really good, and the bass, uh, the bass string didn't overpower the uh, the yeah. um, you know the treble strings. I was really like really trying to pick it apart, but I'm like, this is this is good. Like that's you like know, get it from me. So I don't, I can't take credit for that. <laughs> you know, that's all your hard work, man. <laughs> like even some of the things, it's like I feel like mm-hmm. uh, it's things we've told other people. Yeah. Like think about touch and dynamics. Yes, and. That like he really nailed that. It was like, oh, you're yeah. you're really getting it. You're yeah. 
he's thinking beyond just like what notes to play next yeah. but he's thinking about how he's yeah. gonna play the notes yeah um oh one thing though is uh no one to breathe when to let the the song breathe i think that was another thing that i kind of noticed because it's it's one of those songs that just kind of goes you know but no one to breathe too you know like when when to kind of let you know and there's like a rise and fall of the song yeah but that's like you like yo yo my yeah that's you know that is just that's like that you don't you don't gotta worry about it if you don't want to <laughs> if you don't want to <laughs> if you don't want to but really if you want to reach that level like yeah yo yo my <laughs> like yeah. as Aaron said <laughs> really stretch those long parts yeah. and really compress yeah. those yeah. like compressed parts but <laughs> yeah it's like breathing like a like a living thing <laughs> the music is a living thing <laughs> yeah that's beautiful good job man but yeah that's yeah those are just the things that you know that i would <laughs> i mean just really look at but i don't i don't if yeah. you played it exactly the same you played at a talent show and i was the judge i'm like yeah that's good yeah <laughs> like yeah. A, <laughs> nine out of ten nice marks <laughs> yeah good marks uh, Jim in the chat, yes. he, uh, if mm. anybody is kind of using tabs just as a guide, because mm-hmm. um, you do, if, even if you are using tabs, mm. um, most people don't sight read music in tabs. I, 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 I mean, that would be scary if they did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know I know one ukulele player who can kind of do it, pull it <laughs> off. But I mean, usually you're familiar with the song beforehand. Mm. Yeah. You know how it goes. Yeah. And so Jim gave um, some good advice in the chat saying that mm. he he uses some, um, or he first he makes sure that the text is large enough for him to see. Mm. And then he also uses some colors and some lines to mm. for different sections oh, yeah, of yeah, the yeah. music so that okay. he knows what what's coming up. Because mm. he already knows how the song is going to go in that whatever pink section mm. or whatever he yeah. chooses. That's cool. So, so using that, if you're going to use a chart or use sheet music, then you know you kind of like can organize it in a way in mm-hmm. your your own mind just as yeah. a reference so yeah so yeah that's really good yeah hmm. um also uh who who was it somebody was asking about strings really quick it was kenneth oh uh, like what kenneth, strings are these uh no well um just he has a ranch brand mahogany concert mm-hmm. beginner ukulele Mm-hmm. They have Aquila strings on it. How like what can I what kind of strings could you change it to to make it sound a little less tinny and <laughs> uh-huh, I mean in, in, uh, anything, in, other, anything than, other than that one than that the, you're using the right now. The, yeah, because the Aquila strings stock I mean, Aquila. They're uh, they're meant to make, you know, like uh lower end ukuleles sound better than you know than they are because oh, it's, with more volume yeah with more volume yeah and really a lot of because a lot of people equate volume to you know like good sound right <laughs> they're like oh it's loud it must be good right so but you know and it, and it is for a beginner it is i'm not gonna argue you know like if, if you're if you're nice and loud and bright and stuff if a beginner thinks that's good then that's good that's you know but the more you uh you know the more you mature as a musician the more you kind of want to get a better tone like uh more well-rounded tone instead of just you know blaring brightness right like you don't want to blind people with your brightness <laughs> like you want to be nice and well-rounded so if you want you know I, I really it's just experimenting with a bunch of different strings and i know it's pricey but really that's the you know that's the way to, to kind of really get it because i can give you a bunch of good or give you advice on a bunch of good strings but i'm not too familiar with the ranch brand as he said ranch yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah brand of ukulele so i'm not quite sure what the characteristics of it if it's bright if it's did he say what, oh, no, what no. it was so okay but here's my advice if you want a darker sound okay if it's if you feel like your aquilas are too bright a dark sound a good dark sound is um is the Pro Artes, like Diodario Pro Artes. Uh, these have a good dark sound. These are called AG cross AQ, and they're made by Aquila. So if you like your Aquila strings, these are a little bit brighter, though. Than, uh, but than totally Pro different Arte. material. Yeah, yeah, yeah material. So, totally different sound. So, um, you know, it's uh, uh, those those two are good. Pro Artes um, and, and the AG cross AQ. If you want, um, a, you want it a little bit more brighter than that, then you got like Savarez, which is you know a little bit brighter than the Pro Arte, but it's still got that nice uh, richness to the tone as the Pro Arte does in the AG Cross AQ. 
Um, you can try out, uh, a lot of people don't like worth clears because they're too bright, which I do agree, but on some ukes, like for example, your uke is too dark. This is why I don't, you know, I don't know the, the ranch uke. If the ranch uke is too dark, you want to brighten it up, but you want to brighten it up nicely without yeah, it being clear, just, yeah, kind of clear sound, yeah. then yeah, worth clears are good. Um, a lot yeah. of people stick to the worth browns, but I feel like worth browns doesn't quite have that sustain, you know, I think the clears just have a sustain, but in that category, I think I, I'm gonna have to give the medal to uh, to Martins. Like Martin strings, people sleep on the Martins, but I think <laughs> Martin strings are like really good. Um, so if if you want a brightness to your ukulele, to your darker ukulele, I would go Martin strings or Savarez. Okay. Um, if you want to be dark, um, GHS strings, any of those black strings will will make it you know make your ukulele a little bit more darker. Um, but that's like in the dark, dark. Because we <laughs> talked about Pro Arte being, you know, dark but still got good attack and sustain and stuff. So you want dark, dark. Those uh, uh, GHS strings are nice and dark. Yeah. Uh, so hey, just in general, um, yeah. try out some nylon strings. If you if you mm. kind of look at the pack and mm. then see what it's made out of. Yeah. Nylon, like Aldrin strings are made out of nylon. Mm -hmm. The Pro Artes are nylon too, I think, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, uh, and then and then fluorocarbon. Or like worths are fluorocarbon, mm -hmm. so um, yeah, try out those. How about you give him uh, like the three strings that he should start off with? Okay, if you have to pick three strings out of all of them to yeah. try, okay. try first. Um, AG Cross AQ, they're, they're very well balanced, <laughs> and I mean I know they're yeah, I'm peddling my wares or whatever, <laughs> but really like. I wouldn't have made them if I didn't think that they were the best strings, right? Like if they weren't my first choice, then why even make it? Why even put my name on it? Yes, yeah. so that's that's really like hands down. I, I think it would work well. And we've done, you know, like um strings for a bunch of different sizes now. So it's not just for tenors. But the one thing that I you know do have to say on a lot of people, you know, kinda like, you know, either get turned on or off by it is um is that it's really high um tension. I like my string super high tension so that the attack and the response is is like that nice and you know nice and clean and nice and quick yeah but if you want uh, something that's a little bit lower tension then um Savar is in pro arte so I would pro go, arte and, is still kind of high tension yeah right? but not yeah. as high as these are super yeah high. yeah um but in my my third choice so those are my second choice are 80 cross AQ. <laughs> uh, You're sneaking in four. Or, yeah, <laughs> four because I think they're kind of the same, you know, like pro Arte and Sabres is just Sabres is a little bit brighter. Like really, that's it. And then Martins, really. Don't sleep in the Martins, everybody. Martin. Like, <laughs> Martins strings. Because uh, when I graduated from the Suji over to black strings, everyone's using black strings. And it's like, oh, it sounds good. But to me, it's just like, I just, I don't like the, the dead, you know, it kind of sounds dead. Like it sounds too dark. Like with my tiny soprano helo or prelude, like that darkness didn't really like mix with that, you know, cause I needed something louder. And once I put the, um, you know, the, uh, the Martin strings on it, that really made it come alive. So I think for a uke, you know, for it, I've never heard of the ranch once again. So if it's more of a, uh, a low, you know, on the lower end ukulele, I think Martin will really bring it out. Uh, really quickly, can we answer? Or yeah, uh, do you want to explain what suji is? Oh, so, suji is fishing line. Oh okay. yeah, it's fishing line. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, uh, well, I mean, most most fishing line is made from fluorocarbon, fluorocarbon. anyway. But mm -hmm. but if you have uh, the right tension and and like the right gauges. Mm -hmm. Of fishing line, you can make them sound really <laughs> the good. Right test, yeah, yeah, yeah. On on ukulele, yeah. The only thing is that like ukuleles that use fishing line mm. usually do not have the right tension. Or if you're the right yeah, test. if you're actually using fishing line and you're using all the same gauge, yeah. then that's not gonna sound good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I whatever eat fishing line preludes that yeah. you had, yeah, yeah, in your garage or whatever. They're like yeah. they had that hint of green in them, like back then, you know, because like that that fishing line before was like kind of you know that that greenish. I don't uh -huh. know if you remember, like back in the nineties. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah yeah actually ken ken middleton's um living water strings are yeah. fluorocarbon mm. and i think he got that idea like well, you know fishing line yeah yeah mm. he had different gauges of fishing mm. line tested a, b a bunch mm. of different ones figured out what the best gauges were and mm. then he made his own packs of strings and and so yeah yeah they sound great uh, so sue asked also yeah. asked uh, how often should you change strings um 
you know, if they start to sound dead, that's when you change them out. So it's going to be different for everybody because the more you play it, the the more, you know, the, the sound will die out. Um, once it sounds kind of dead, and what I mean by that is they're not as, you know, they're not as bright as they used to be. Um, they don't, like, ring out as long as they used to or uh, or they just feel kind of grimy, you know? Like, those are all signs that you should change your strings. So for some people, that could be, like, like a year, you know? <laughs> some people, like... Never uh, a month, you know, or some people never, you know. So it's just it's not naming for names, but <laughs> yeah, like there's some people that the Yukes and uh, is in this room that have not changed in years or ever. <laughs> what they found I, the right combination yeah. of strings that they that they wanted. Yeah. I, I was just telling somebody like, um, it's almost like uh, uh, do what we say, not what we do, because we <laughs> yeah. do not change strings yeah. very often. Yeah. I should be changing them like at least once every other month, but I mean, good luck getting me to change my strings. Good luck Is getting that... me to do anything, really. <laughs> so, like, if you're playing every day, or say yeah. you're playing every other day. Changing it every other month is that like a good rule of thumb? It's a good rule of thumb. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people would say every month and stuff, and I think that's a little bit too much unless you're, you know, playing for people and you really, you really need the clarity and stuff on stage. It's not mm -hmm. like you're playing at Carnegie Hall and everything needs to be perfect, so you don't necessarily have to change strings. And that's just how I feel about it. You know, some people might feel different, but you're asking me, so I'm telling you my opinion. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Uh, let's get to our song. You gentlemen, want to get to your songs because it's you know it's the last uh, yeah. the last few minutes of of the show. So here on the show, we do have a songwriting challenge. So we just kind of give um, you know we give ourselves some guidelines on what to what to write with. This time it's two ish chords. Yeah. So um, write any song, any any key, two chords. Um, and I think ish, ish two ish chords. <laughs> yeah. Reggae. I think uh, hot and cold and you said, diminished um, chord. There's a flat seven or something like major flat seven, yeah. flat seven major. I forget what it was, but something like that, right? Yeah, and then lounge music. I think lounge music, too. yeah. Okay, um, so ours is due today, and it'll kind of just give you guys an idea of what songs you can write with, uh, you know, given the guidelines, and then. Um, you uh, you guys can turn in your songs if you turn it in anytime you know before the next show it should be all good and count it towards and uh, we'll give you guys an extra private lesson it doesn't matter which month you use it in oh excuse me Ooh, just drank some water there <laughs> but like uh yeah you get an extra private lesson so it's cool you don't you don't gotta it's not like oh this person uh this week this person won the new uh, the extra private lesson it's like no if you if you make one if you write one then we'll give you one Everybody gets one. Okay. Um, here's mine. So story story time. A little little bit because we're you know we're kind of getting closer to the end here. Um I totally forgot <laughs> our stuff was due today. But I was driving over here and um and it's great actually that, that we're you know that we're actually in the office because I think if I stayed home and we were doing it at home, I would just not have thought about it. You know, because <laughs> yeah. I had some time alone in the car to think like okay well what do i need for today's you know for today's live lesson and i'm like oh my god the song is due <laughs> parked by uh by machia you know like that, uh -huh. <laughs> that little beach over there and stuff yeah. parked over there took my ukulele out and wrote this song and so i i wrote something but um I, this is like my 10th food song and we're talking about chicken rice earlier i basically wrote about chicken rice <laughs> okay but it's a specific kind of chicken rice um and i had this rice for the first time when i was in thailand and uh, I was at, uh, at Asada's house, and uh -huh. we're waiting for because people are setting up. He's setting up for his big, you know, welcome oh, party. Oh yes, there. yes. <laughs> <laughs> that I wrote yes. about that rice. I know. And, and I looked it up. It's called Hainanese chicken rice. Uh -huh. It's like Hainanese chicken rice. So it's like it's basically ginger, like ginger chicken cold ginger boiled, chicken it's like boiled, boiled yeah boiled cold ginger chicken yeah with like this sambal or some kind of sauce on it the doesn't side. look fancy at all no it it's like very white and <laughs> very pale in color yeah, you know, like, yeah yeah so that's just boiled chicken and, and and rice but it's it's amazing it's really good <laughs> the sauce is really good that the chicken is good for some reason <laughs> i'm just like what and we had seconds or at least i did yeah, i was like dude yeah. can i have more of this this is really good because asada was just like oh here maybe just eat this while you guys are waiting for the for the party to start because uh -huh. yeah. we have lots and tons and tons of food for the party but you guys can have this for now uh -huh. and i'm like all right i guess i'll just have chicken rice oh my god what is this <laughs> so uh -huh. yeah so for this i did two chords in the chorus and i did four chords in the um 
in in the verse and i and i added that flat seven in there so here we go And it's cold. Make your taste buds explode. It's a soul food from an Asian soul. Sriracha samba to make you lose control. And all the oriental ingredients gonna guarantee you coming back for more. Hainanese chicken rice. Hainanese chicken rice. Hainanese chicken's nice. Hainanese chicken rice. <laughs> Let me try that again. This doesn't sound like anything like how I wrote it. It's a hot and it's cold. Make your taste buds explode. It's like soul food from the Asian soul. Sriracha samba to make you lose control. And all the oriental ingredients gonna guarantee you coming back for more. Hainanese chicken rice. Hainanese chicken rice. Hainanese chicken's nice. Hainanese chicken rice. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. reggae reggae was one of them. Yeah, reggae was one of them. Yes, that's right. The reggae was one yeah. of them. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chinese yeah. chicken rice. It's a have it. very like local sounding <laughs> song. Like, oh, yeah. yeah. When you started humming at the yeah. beginning, I thought you were humming a smooth operator. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, so I was like, oh, it, it, it's gonna sound like that. But then when you actually started singing, it's like, oh no, it's different. Yeah. yeah, I since I just wrote it, I forgot how like the actual like melody went. I'm like, I'm reading lyrics. I guess I'll just make it up right now. <laughs> it's hot and it's cold. Yeah. Make your taste buds explode. <laughs> Okay, that's my song. It's yeah, wrote it in like fifteen minutes. <laughs> it sounds like Monaco Company, actually. Yeah, well, there's uh, yeah, like that. Da, 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 da. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like what, I took that from song? Uh, yeah. I took that from from that, and then I I took the uh, there's that if I paint. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, what, that's what yeah. I was thinking too. So it's, it's that picture and song. That. I was like, yeah. So I just took all my favorite reggae songs and just put them in one song. Yeah. <laughs> And then I, ba -da -da, I don't know. I was like, I need, I need that flat seven because I'm the one who added it in there. If I don't use it, it's because like, oh, why, why is he suggesting things he doesn't want to do? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I felt it was my responsibility to at least to... add it in. Yeah, yeah. Added in there. so I did. I crossed off a bunch of those, <laughs> and um, I wasn't late for my homework this time. <laughs> Everybody only gets one because you got a pass last time. Yeah. <laughs> can't do it two times in a row. <laughs> so yeah, go ahead, gentlemen. Uh, I'll go, I guess. You wanna uh, go, yeah, Aaron? Up to you. Uh, okay, I'll go. Uh, yeah, and I'll just play my song. <laughs> Oh, 
one. <laughs> I love that. that Were you actually scratching? No, I, I uh, took a sample of yeah. somebody like uh, scratching, uh -huh. and mm -hmm. then I just like uh, chopped uh, it, e or I finger drummed it. Oh, nice! Oh, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Yeah, because it wasn't, it, it wasn't quantized at all, right? That that part, you you. Uh, some parts kind of, and then some parts I I'm just like actually playing along to the song yeah just using my like uh, yeah the sample mm. so, the, yeah yeah uh, nice the, so that that song like it kind of uses uh two chords it uses a g and an e minor mm. kind of as a bass but then you hear different chords because the bass is playing yeah notes. i was gonna mm. say and then the other chords that you can kind of hear or like that it's based around is like uh, B minor seven and a mm. G major seven, mm -hmm. and then I, I put in a, a F uh, F major seven because that's the mm. flat seven oh, okay, of okay. Yeah, a yeah, G. Yeah. Uh, the key is in G, mm. and then I also put in uh, a to like that. There's three parts, and that second part is going from B minor seven to uh, A major. Mm. So that's also like the uh, major second. Too. Yeah, yeah. It's staying in to that. G. Mm. Yeah. So kind of marked right off on, all those man. things. That's cool. I dig it, and it's it's very Oriental sounding, you yeah. know. Like, <laughs> yeah. But I I dig that the riff gives you that idea of the two chords. That it's, it's like, yeah, yeah. It it kind of stays within that. Mm -hmm. But then yeah, the bass really makes yeah. it sound like way more, more chords than that. Yeah. So like that first part, it's uh, kotos. Mm -hmm. I, I using a. a uh, virtual koto to yeah. play, yeah. And then the second part, mm. I'm playing the bass, or I'm using a virtual bass too. But I'm I also double layered it with a uh, uh, bass koto because mm. like the, oh. to get like that extra. And if you can hear it, it kind of has like that twangy kind yeah, of yeah. feeling of uh, koto too. So oh. yeah, when when we talked about like lounge music, my yeah. I immediately thought about lo-fi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like and then when I think about lo-fi, I also think about like um like new jobs and stuff. Yeah. So very much in that realm yeah. I tried to do something. Anime studying girl. Yeah. yeah. With headphones. Yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah. Right off. Hey, good job. All right. Eric. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I like I had I had several different ideas mm -hmm. um and it just like those didn't pan out and mm -hmm. so it was uh, only like a couple of days ago and, and it started to come together a, a couple of days ago so mm -hmm. yeah. It's so exciting to have our own Saturday What is this sound in my chest? Pour out the cereal, smooth all the folds in the line paper note that you left Me, clean off the table, I move the bed easily Pull these new shoes out from under as I wonder Will you hear my footsteps? Will you come at all? Will they hear our voices? the wall Reach for the door handle Carefully step through the backyard That leads to the street Over two fences I climb And I wrestle with Butterflies down to the place where we'll possibly meet And I stand by with a heart full of thunder 
as I wonder. <laughs> that was about you too. Yeah, so it's kind of like um, so I, I was listening to, or well, I had Josh Rouse in mind, and okay. so like when I, because like you, you kind of said lounge. He's not really lounge mm-hmm. music, but he's kind of like that indie folk, like mm-hmm. new new indie folk. So like any, I I just imagine like any indie movie mm-hmm. should have him on the soundtrack, you know, and so, so yeah, I was thinking I had him in mind. And then I started writing the song, and then um, and then later on, I was after I was done with the song, mm-hmm. I listened to a couple of his albums, and there is a song that sounds, <laughs> sounds very <just> similar. <laughs> it's called um, I think it's called Our Love, mm. but yeah, but it it sounds like I obviously drew yeah. from that song. <laughs> but I um, mean, it, the six eight is gonna get an upvote for me. Like anything yeah, six eight, yeah, yeah. that's gonna sound loungy already yeah so but like the idea behind the song was Mm -hmm. um because i kind of wanted it like based off of those two main chords Mm -hmm. instead of going back and forth i Mm -hmm. like you know because it goes right and then instead of going back it just stays there Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know and so so the idea for the song was kind of like um like puppy love like oh. you know when you're when you're a kid right. and you're like kind of like you like this girl <laughs> it's that feeling oh. where it's like you know it's it feels like something but it's not really gonna go anywhere you know <laughs> <laughs> and so like that's that's it, like the the idea kind of uh-huh. mirrors the chords mm, oh, cool where it's like you know like there's something bubbling up oh, but like awesome. but it it stays because yeah. like you know and then the whole song is kind of about like um i got a note from you and said we're gonna meet up on saturday and mm. i don't even know if you're gonna show yeah but i'm kind of excited and like you know <laughs> and there there is no like it's kind of like it talks about getting to the place where they're gonna meet Mm-mm. but then it never has a resolution too so it kind of like even the uh-huh. the song itself follows that progression where it's, it's just like, him like thinking about that. Yeah, yeah yeah like oh my goodness like you know excited yeah you might <laughs> you might come you might not but then uh, I, I don't know oh God, so I yeah I, I i felt like i could imagine that being in like a like one of the disney remake movies that they've been doing <laughs> where they like remake musicals you know uh, uh yeah, yeah so like uh, as an insert song to where like which movie I was thinking like something like Mary Poppins or something uh-huh. where it's like, you know, an adult is singing to a kid about their feelings or something. Uh, yeah. Like that. yeah, yeah. Cool. And that. so, so that, that too, it was yeah. kind of like, it was me being nostalgic about that feeling. Oh. So it was like, like a kid wouldn't have written mm-hmm. that song, mm-hmm. but it's like kind of through the lens of like, of, uh, I know what that's like, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's cool, man. <laughs> I dig it. <laughs> yeah, I love the feel, you know, love that like kind of six eight feel, and I like that it does kind of stay. It's like that's yeah, yeah. It's in the same place. That's awesome, and it just kind of stays. Yeah. And then yeah, and then even that the, that because like it was G major seven, mm-hmm. and then kind of like a C major seven. I played around with mm-hmm. different ways of playing C major mm-hmm. seven, but even the major seven is an unresolved chord. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like you know. It's just like everything is up in the in the yeah. air, and there's no like solid thing to land on. It, and okay. oh, it, it kind of it also kind of reminded me of like Rebecca Sugar's song. Yeah. Oh okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I think she also like she's not afraid to not resolve mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. pattern, right? Uh-huh. She like uh-huh. ends on like diminished chords or stuff, yeah. and then she'll just go right back into it, where yeah. it's like, oh, that felt a little weird but it yeah. totally makes the song better yeah, because yeah. of it yeah. yeah and then she's she's also one too where like she's kind of like you can tell that she's nostalgic for childhood yeah mm-hmm. and paints yeah. it in a way that like you know it's bittersweet yeah. but it's yeah. like good it's still good you know yeah yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, it reminds me of everything stays. That, mm-hmm. that very, yeah, yeah, very kind of kind of everything stays. But if you listen to that Josh Rouse song, it's like probably <laughs> that's one yeah, to one. <laughs> that's probably where where I really got it from. But yeah. oops, wrote somebody else's song. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not it's song. not exact and like totally oh. different subject matter and um, totally different chords. I mm-hmm. think, but. Yeah. But that's I definitely pulled from that, like <laughs> in some part of my brain, but yeah. definitely pulled from that. So. <laughs> we cool beans. We've all done that, right? Like uh, we've done the song challenge, and then mm. we've said like we come in, and then we're like, oh, I realize it's this person's yeah. song. Yeah, I, I wrote that Honu song, and it sounds yeah. exactly like that, like that Cascade song. So like, <laughs> yeah. I wanted to put it in the EP, but I'm like, oh, this sounds way too close. Yeah, do I have to, to pay to royalties yeah. for that? <laughs> I don't know. I might record it and just sing it differently, uh-huh. <laughs> like just uh-huh. change up the melody line, maybe. But I do want to record it. But uh, yeah, if you guys want to, you know, write songs along with us, you definitely can. Kai, give us the uh, the guidelines again, so that people can write a song. Uh, shoot, I don't have it pulled up. Sorry, <laughs> two chords yeah. ish. So we, you know, we well, all of us wrote more than um, uh, two more than two chords, but we had a two chord part in you know in all our songs. So um, you can write in just two chords, or you can you know you can write a part that has two chords in it. Um, lounge, reggae, uh, diminished chord. Uh, oh, I also had a diminished chord in mind. <laughs> yeah, so I, I was trying to knock off all this. Anyway, so diminished chord, uh, flat seven. So, for example, if it's if your song is in G, a uh, flat seven would be an F natural. Yeah, so an F major to the G, right? So it's kind of like just basically a step down from whatever your you know your your key is. Okay, so what else did we have, guy, for that? That's it, right? Uh, I'm looking it up. Two-ish reggae lounge, lounge. Hot, hot, or, hot or cold. cold. Oh yeah, hotter. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I did it with, yeah, 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 with, with cold, my two. Yeah, yeah with my yeah. two because it's like a uh, cold chicken, uh-huh. like that, like spicy. hot sauce, that spicy. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, and then so the main part is that it's just two chords. Everything yeah. else is like a bonus, kind of mm-hmm. give you guys ideas. So as long as you write two chords yeah. or That's write really a song in two chords, yeah, with, with two a part words. with two chords, mm-hmm. right? That's mm-hmm. it. Yep. Really, and then send it to us, um, or uh, post it on the UU Plus forums, and all the people who post the song there will get extra uh, private lessons for this month. Okay, so uh, that that about this. Do we have any other business to attend to? No, right? I don't think so. Uh, tomorrow will be a little Friday Lab Jam. We'll have it, you know, from home again um, because. I have the last few uh, private lessons that's going on. Uh, speaking of private lessons, I should talk about that. Uh, we're, you were adding times and we're also taking away some time. So because uh, you know we're here at the office now, um, we won't be doing private lessons the same day as, uh, as we do these live streams. So that means uh, the private lessons are going to stay just Monday and Tuesday. But um, we usually have the Monday, Tuesday from 9 to 12, but I'm making it so that it's 9 to uh, nine to 3. And I think one of those days is going to be 9 to 4. I want to extend it so that uh, some people who live in other parts of the country, you or know, world. Uh, or pa- <laughs> world, yeah, yeah. Or other parts of the world, can, it's not like super duper early. Yeah. So we'll, uh, I'll change one of them to uh, to up to 4 o'clock. So that, that, will be, uh, that will be what we do. So either uh, 9, to, 9 to 3 and 9 to 4. Uh, Mondays and Tuesdays like that's basically it. we took away all the uh, private lessons on Friday so I apologize for the inconvenience if you, if Friday works for you folks but you know we put in more time on Mondays and Tuesday we try to make up for it by putting more time there okay um, see you guys tomorrow have a great one stay safe take care uh, wear your masks do your thing okay have a good one aloha